Hi, I'm Tim Zacharias with Cougar USA and your host of Building Value. On this episode, we have Mark Devlin, co-founder and principal at Infinity Lighting Solutions. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, Tim. It's great to be here. Awesome. Well, really excited about today's show. We're going to be talking about the impact that lighting can have on a commercial building. And more importantly, we've been talking about the impact that Mark and Mopai U will have on children who've lost a parent to cancer. On Building Value, we go behind the scenes of building operations to showcase the people and products that make buildings work and the value they bring to the community. How did you kind of get into <laughs> the, the commercial lighting world? It's been a long, it's been a long journey yeah. and, and, and not the, uh, the usual journey. Okay. So I spent my, I spent probably 25 to 30 years, um, working in, um, HR and administration, working for for-profit and non-profit companies and, um, uh, doing HR and doing safety and, um, my last uh, job in the corporate world took me to Shreveport, and um, I was there for about six months and, and thought, you know, this is where God wants me to be. And um, uh, six months later, I said, God, I know you want me in Shreveport, but I know you don't want me here. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, But the uh, truth be told, he did, because that's where I met my partner in the lighting business, uh, Dan, and uh, um, he had the, uh, contract for the, uh, our, the, we did a three, uh, we are a three shift manufacturing site and, um, um, he had the contract to provide meals to the employees. And, um, uh, so oh, wow. we also had a lighting business. And so, um, you know, when you're in your early fifties, uh, that's not a great time for a career move, but, uh, I did. And so that sounds, uh, that sounds familiar. My dad yeah. is similar uh similar age yeah so the rest is history we started in the lighting business in about 2015 and um moved my fortunately was able to move my family back to houston in 2017 okay and um uh, spent about two and a half years commuting weekly from shreveport to houston wow building up our our uh, client base and um um, yeah, I don't recommend that commute. That's, that's a long one. As I said, it's a little bit longer. You know, it's, you, you yeah. hear Houston, maybe over to Port Arthur, but uh, Houston and Shreveport, it's, it's a little bit longer. Don't recommend it. <laughs> wow. So a couple of years building up the client base, you're able to move here permanently and then just kind of jump up all in on. We did. On and Infinity. so we started, uh, we started Infinity Lighting Solutions in July of 2018. So we're coming up on on three years and um uh just very blessed with um great client base and and um you know we build our business based on repeat customers so um we started out um being known as kind of the parking garage guys and and that was that was totally our that was all we did was parking garages and um um but our our uh business model has slowly but surely uh evolved into a much more sophisticated uh product line and um uh so we're um yeah we've managed to make it through covid um better than we entered covid and which um you know if you would have asked me that you know six months ago would we be coming out of covid stronger than we entered it i would have laughed at you and uh but we did so, that's good um like everybody else we kind of you have to pivot and uh yeah change change the way you do things yep so we absolutely. did absolutely yeah so w- what would be a, a kind of a typical scope for y'all or what's the you know like what what is your kind of offering in, in terms of lighting or services? so we are a full service lighting um commercial lighting company okay um a couple of things that i think help us stand apart from our uh competition is the fact that um, the solutions that we provide to our our clients are truly turnkey Uh, so that that starts with the initial survey 
mm-hmm. whether it's a parking garage, a set of stairwells, a lobby, uh, interior lobby, office suites. Um, come back, uh, provide the customer with savings calculators, energy savings, all of that, ROIs, and then um, uh, if there's a, if there is a uh, rebate offered mm-hmm. by the utility company, in this case Centerpoint, um, manage that process from start to finish, um, and um, uh, also handle the installation of the project um, and the warranty. And nice. so, if the if the client if there's an issue with a light um, after after installation is complete, then we would come back instead of the, the client having to go out and you know fight with the manufacturer on a limited warranty, you know, very limited manufacturer's warranty. Mm-hmm. Um, we do all that for them, and so um, uh, including. Uh, repl- actual replacement, sure. on the spot install uh, replacement of a of a fixture that's either fixture sensor whatever it is, mm. nice. um, and um, um, you know try to do it to where it's you know with our our clients are mainly property managers and building engineers and their plates are so full um, that uh, we actually have the ability to take something off their plate. And when presented, when they're presented with that, um, it's very attractive because yep. normally vendors don't look to, t- to take something off. It's just, hey, here's something else to add. <laughs> and so, um, you know, th- what we, the only thing that I like to, to add to their plate would be a piece of pie. So, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, you're and we'll about talk place. about that yeah, later. We got, yeah. And, and, you know, they can't, uh, if you're watching or listening, you can't smell this amazing pie that's sitting here in front of me, but it's uh, it's kind of torture that we're waiting till the end to talk about uh, Mopai U and the pie here, but very much looking forward to grabbing a bite of that in a little bit. Absolutely. So, but, I mean, it sounds very very similar to our approach in, in kind of being a partner with them mm-hmm. over the long term, right? We're not looking to get in, uh, make a sale, and then move on to the right. next place, right? We want to be with them for the, you know, the design phase, installation, maintenance, and then later down the road, replacement whenever right. it does get to that point again so definitely definitely um, appreciate that approach and and i think uh, it, i would believe that in your case as well that uh, that the people that you work with appreciate that so would you say that the the kind of the driving factor the decision maker for you like are, are people looking to upgrade their lighting solutions because they want the energy savings or is it like say in a parking garage more of like a safety issue or something like that i mean what like what are what do you feel like is kind of the biggest when they walk away from the project what are the what's the biggest sure. thing that they say great question i think it depends on the uh, on the situation and the client okay so we have some clients that they're simply looking for um if you can get the roi or the payback between mm-hmm. you know say two to three years um uh that's all that that's all they're looking for um the um and and that's the the beauty with LED is that, yeah, you know, five years ago you couldn't do that. The cost was too high, right? It, the energy it, savings was there, but the cost was too high, right? Yep, and the the technology was not where it is today, um, and so, um, but what today you're you're looking at, um, you know, lifespan of LEDs is at least fifty thousand hours as compared to mm-hmm. say eight thousand hours for a fluorescent T eight. Um, you know, the lifespan of that fluorescent in a parking garage, in a 24-7 parking mm-hmm. garage or in a stairwell that, you know, the lights in a parking garage or a stairwell never go off. They can't for safety reasons. Um, the uh, the lifespan uh, of a T8 in that mm-hmm. situation is probably about a year. Oh, wow. Um, I mean, they literally so have our clients. maintenance. They literally have, if you look at every one of these buildings, you know, um, they literally have a guy that does nothing else but change out light bulbs, wow. whether that's in a parking garage, stairwell, or throughout that, that office tower. Wow. Um, they've got a room of nothing but fluorescent uh, fixtures. And so what we're doing, one of the things that we kind of pivoted to during COVID when, you know, 
people didn't have you know um, a lot of money laying around to to do big capital projects. Sure. Is we started working with our clients to just change out suites and change out mm. common areas like elevator lobbies, and um, it's the same footprint throughout the building. Right. Um, and you've got well, if you look at the outside of Four Oaks Place, um, well, and all we did was we took um, their two by four uh, fixtures. Mm-hmm. Didn't change the fixture. All we did was change them from, say, a 33K or 3500 um, uh, fluorescent T8 mm-hmm. to a 5K LED. Uh, LED. Yep. Um, but we took their lifespan, went from 8,000 hours to 50,000 hours. Wow. With a, now they've got a five year warranty on that. So if a light goes out, they call us, we replace it. Yeah, I mean, th- that's what these are, I believe. The uh, We didn't change the fixtures. We just put LED lights in the existing fixture. That's right. right? So, yeah, it's a quick, yeah. quick way to do the upgrade. Yeah, it looks like they just spent, they just put it, they just went out and invested in new fixtures. Mm-hmm. They didn't. Yeah. You know, so the the cost of that project was a um, was very small. Um, but the, um, you know, the, not only the energy savings, um, uh, for instance, if you know you've got three light, uh, three lamp, two by fours up there uh, in this room, and each one of those, if that was a fluorescent, you'd be looking at, you could be looking at like 32 watts per lamp. Oh yeah. Times three. Yeah. And now you're those are probably 13 watts. Yeah. And so. Um, well, not the, only that, it's the, the savings time and the are effort. huge. Yeah. To yeah to do all the replacements. I mean, the rest of our office is in that yeah. way. So it's, they all go out. It's like, man, was that the ballast? Is it the lamp? And you got you got to check. And yeah. Well, and that's the, the, the beauty of LED is there are, there is no ballast. You yeah. know, you're working off of a driver. Um, yeah. Those drivers are very dur- are very durable. So there's many fewer um, things to, you know, uh, to go out sure. or to fail. Um, but the bottom line is if, if they fail, we're going to replace it. Um, the client's not going to have to worry about it. So, it really, just depends on the on the uh, the property and the, and the company, depending upon um, whether they're looking for savings. Mm-hmm. Um, the other aspect uh, that is very important is the safety aspect, mm-hmm. um, and that is whether you're in a you're in a um, stairwell mm-hmm. or in a a parking garage. Um, you know, if that, if you park in that parking garage and it's, it's dimly lit, you don't, you know, you don't see the, the crack in it if, uh, that's right outside your door or that you're, as you're walking to the, to the elevator and you trip and you fall, um, or God forbid somebody gets attacked, um, in a parking garage, they can buy a whole lot of lights for, um, the, the amount of the lawsuit that sure. they're going to they're gonna have. A perfect example is working with a client in a Galleria um, area parking garage and um, uh, had presented them with a uh, proposal for the, the garage stairwells. Um, it got, didn't get approved. Um, and shortly thereafter, one of their tenants was... Um, carjacked. Oh wow! In that, in the in the stairwell that wasn't approved. Oh man! Um, car stolen. Fortunately, she was okay. Um, but uh, long story short, um, we replaced the the they fixtures the in that stairwell sure. like that same yeah the next day. Wow! So yep. yeah, I hate to, I mean, have a a real life example of that, but it is. It, the uh, safety side definitely not something to uh, take lightly. No, well, and with the, um, I mean, I've seen some very, very, uh, there's some very steep stairwells in some of these uh, office towers um, that um, it, it's it, it's not easy um, uh, going up or down those those stairwells when it's when it's well properly lit. lit. Yeah. Um, 
it's especially difficult <laughs> when it's dark. Sure. And there's plenty of dark ones out there. Yeah. Well, it's a good opportunity for yeah, you, though. Absolutely. Cool. So, so beyond um, kind of the parking garages and, and moving into the lobbies and, and uh, common spaces, Christmas lights, things like that, what else have, uh, have y'all, has Infinity gotten into? So we've, um, one of the projects that we're most proud of that we've finished recently is the, um, the lobby at BHP. Okay. Um, uh, if you go to our, go to our website, there's a, there's a great before picture that shows this, the lobby is beautiful, two story lobby. Um, but the, uh, the coloring on it was, um, uh, it was just very yellow. Um, gotcha. Elevator lobbies were um, uh, more golden than than yellow, and yep. and uh, it's now uh, it's now just a beautiful white. And, and that the, that would be like on that the the scale you're talking about is that mm -hmm. the, basically that color scale of the lighting, mm -hmm. right? Three two thousand, three thousand being pretty yellow, and that upper five thousand end being a little yeah, more so, bright white. So um, the lighting that we put in is five K. Okay, and so. It's actually cooler, so mm -hmm. as the temperature gets um, higher, higher, right? It's actually it's cooler. A cooler, yeah. Color, so, yes. yes. Um, and so um, the um, so uh, it was very. Let's just say it was very warm um, okay. uh, prior to the uh, the upgrade. But it is. Um, uh, we just had some professional photos done. And it's it's stunning, yep. um, and so it's um, um, uh, it's um, it's hard to it's hard to imagine that it's the same same lobby. Right. Yep. Looks like it's brand new. Yeah. Interesting. Easy way to kind of upgrade. Yeah, I wouldn't say easy, um, <laughs> just because it was a well, sorry, it was maybe, a challenge. Maybe not um, easy, but I yeah, mean, but yeah, the, yeah. Would, I guess if you're From saying, the, "Hey, let's refresh our lobby," lighting may not be the first thing that they think of, right? They may think no. furniture, flooring, Absolutely. whatever. But yeah. to go in and leave all that in place and and yeah. change out the the lighting and have such a big impact is yeah. Is well, and now the um, the um, again they've gone from uh, metal halide fixtures oh, which wow. had a which not only those are terribly inefficient yeah um plus like they're 20 they're, minutes they have a on. you know they each have a uh, a ballast mm -hmm. um plus the fact that you're on a second you know you're doing this on the second floor of the of the lobby um and so each one of those ballasts has got to be removed and replaced and but the beauty of it now is that um now when a light goes out all you simply have to do is unscrew the light, screw a Put new one in. in. Yeah. Um, they, no more worrying about, you know, is it the ballast, is it the you right. know, the lamp? Um, plus the color is now 100% consistent. Nice. Very nice. So anything outside of the lighting stuff that you guys have been kind of working on? Absolutely. Pivoting so, a little bit during COVID. Yeah, we, um, you know, we entered uh 2020 um very excited about about the uh forecast for the year um had a bunch of you know large projects teed up and ready to go uh with parking garages with some new clients and um everything changed uh about march the 10th and a bit. um a little yeah, bit yeah um you know we're all in, we're all in the same boat so all of those um, jobs either got uh, postponed indefinitely or just flat out canceled. And uh, we're just now starting to see some of those projects come back right. in one form or another. Um, and um, so we started looking for ways to pivot our business model. And uh, it made sense for us, since we're already in the lighting space, um, to look at uh, UV and UVC solutions for air disinfection and surface disinfections and disinfectants. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, um, and just um, ways to, you know, everybody was kind of in the same boat um, and it gave us the ability to um, provide a, a solution that that is going to help, you know, the overall, you know, 
people get through COVID. And so we looked at a bunch of different technologies um, and uh, came across a company out of um, New Hampshire uh, called Far UV Stereoray. And what was attractive to us about Stereoray was they were a small company um, that they had, and they had patented technology, but they had been around for 14 years prior to COVID. Um, and they were using this technology called Far UV mm-hmm. um, on with a very specific uh, with specific applications um, like wastewater treatment, um, and just and had some clients that were using the using the technology. Um, for completely different applications, you know, nobody knew about. <laughs> yeah, about you know, uh, this was wasn't a uh, something that was on people's radar. There's there, it's the only technology available today that allows for real time disinfection of air and surfaces with a high degree of efficacy with people present. That's ah, that's the key. That is that's the game changer. Um, okay. And that you can have, you can provide, they, pro, uh, uh, they provide for a, a, a tiered approach. So it would start with your HVAC. Um, it would include um, uh, luminaires, um, wall sconces, um, hand wands, hmm. carts for, say, hotels, um autonomous vehicles, sure. robots, um, so that the, if you were to have, say if you had it in, in, in Cougar, mm-hmm. um, uh, your HVAC, um, that's going to, depending upon the uh, specifications of your, of your, your capacity for HVAC, it's going to circulate your air generally six to eight times an hour. Um, they can provide um, a log one or a, a log four first pass kill rate, meaning that wow. that's 99.9%. Yeah. 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 Um, as compared to other technologies that are going to be log one at best. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's on your HVAC. Um, you take a, if you were to have a, um, a luminaire in this room, the luminaires operate off a line of sight. So they can, they emit photons that travel at the speed of light um, for up to a thousand feet. The same, the the technology works equally as well indoors as it does outdoors. Oh, wow. So not only if you were, if we were sitting in this room and one of us had, had COVID or the flu or Mm -hmm. any number of other, um, uh, viruses. The the second that we open our mouth and expel particles, it takes it takes. For instance, with COVID, it takes one photon to literally explode a COVID pathogen. COVID is very easy to kill hmm. um, from a pathogen standpoint, but you've got for surfaces, you've got. Um, there are certain superbugs like C. diff and MRSA. They can la- they can last on this table for up to five months to seven months. Oh wow! Um, Far UV sterile ray two twenty two can kill them literally within seconds. Um, but the the and and so you take that same technology and say for a, a Houston Cougar football game. If you had the uh, lights in the stadium, mm-hmm. you could provide continuous, uh, real-time disinfection of every seat in the house um, with full attendance, without masks, um, in real time. Interesting. Yeah. And if if somebody were to um, cough or sneeze, um, that that viral part that particle it will literally be destroyed hmm. in a uh about an uh instantly wow yeah that's that's really interesting so you, so i mean you're this is something that you could like you said put 
in the HVAC system. You'd have just in the room, one over that. So depending on your level of need or, or want, you can kind of. Uh, Absolutely. The the solution that we recommend is, is going to be a tiered mm -hmm. um, approach. Um, so if you're a restaurant, um, um, that's probably going to mean um, HVAC, uh, luminaires, and hand wands. Um, uh, the hand wand, uh, if you were to compare a sterile ray hand wand to a, a commercial hand wand that you might find on Bed Bath & Beyond or Alibaba or um, Home Depot, mm -hmm. whatever, um, you would literally have to hold that wand um, a couple inches above whatever you're trying to disinfect for about 30 seconds. With the sterile ray hand wand, you literally would be would just scan it, at, hold it over the surface, and just swipe it, hmm. sweep it, um, and literally within um, a second or two, um, the table is going to be disinfected. Uh, we just did a um, just got the air studies back from the Pittsburgh Steelers, who sterile ray um, went up and visited. In fact, they're there now uh, presenting the air samples uh, results. They looked at the Steeler locker room. The you know, they um, at Heinz, Heinz Field, they, they also have a locker room. for. They share that with the University of Pittsburgh. So they each have their own. Steelers have a locker room. University of Pittsburgh has a locker room. Separate training facilities. Um, they, um, they looked at... Um, uh, Mr. Rooney's uh, office, hmm. um, uh, and then the um, luxury suite, and also two of the hotels that they stayed at. And um, let's just say that the um, uh, before and after air samples are pretty compelling. Oh, um, wow. And they, they don't paint a good picture, um, uh, especially for there's a, uh, the video of the um uh training scissor uh, the tape scissors um that they that they use in the locker room in the um, training facilities um particularly gross um, interesting uh the before and then the um, <laughs> uh, if you've ever had doubts about the um um cleanliness of a, of a microwave in a hotel um uh, those doubts are well founded because um, let's just say the uh, that was an active petri dish oh. on the before. Uh, same thing with the uh, the bedspread in a hotel. Um, not very comforting. All right, gonna need to get one of these <laughs> wands and uh, for for travel. Yes, that's uh, it's a little disconcerting. Yeah, interesting. So we've. Um, uh, the thing that's exciting for us is that uh, there's literally, you can look at every industry in the, literally in the world, um, and there's literally not a single industry where this this technology is not game changing. Sure. Um, so, um, uh, regardless of of the of the industry, there's an app there's an application yeah. for it. There's and people, so, and yeah. like you said, there's a lot of opportunities to be able to make upgrades whether they're for energy saving safety beautification maybe all three uh oh, if they're lucky and uh that that's a, yep. I think it's a great approach yep so you've said it twice now that your you know your goal is to take things off the client's plate and mm -hmm. i can't keep uh looking at this amazing pie and, and smelling it without starting to talk about it so mm. let's pivot a little bit from infinity lighting solutions to um Mopi U and and what we have here on the table with with the pies. So, um, can you give us kind of the backstory uh, <laughs> of Mopi U and and uh, kind of how we got to to this point here? You bet, love to. Um, we lost a dear friend, um, Moises uh, Tobias, who was our one of our first. Um, he was. He was our one of the first engineers that we dealt with on our first project at, at Phoenix Tower for Parkway. And um, were it not for Moises 
and um, uh, they would have found Dan and I curled up in a corner of a parking garage because we had no idea where we were going, and we would have just been lost. And um, but Moises um, seemed like he kind of followed us from project to project um, in our early days with Parkway. And um, next thing I know, he'd show up. He we'd be over at Post Oak Central, and he there would be Moises. And um, um, we became uh, good friends, and uh, but just casually. And um, and then I learned that uh, he told me that he had uh, stage four stomach cancer. And uh, um, yeah, Moses was thirty nine years old and had a wife and three kids. And at the time, I thought, ah, there's no way that yeah he'll beat it. And um, so we. We um, put together something called No Mo Cancer and sold a bunch of T-shirts and had a, just an incredible group of people and um, uh, raised $10,000 and gave that to Moises and Olga on his lawn, on their front lawn on December the 8th of uh, 2020. And um, uh, three, uh, well, March the 5th, he died. And um, so... Um, last, so in 2020, I had made 70, I made 70, I told myself, I'm not going to make, I don't have time, I'm not going to make that many pies this year, I'm going to cut it back, thinking I'll make about 30. Well, um, I made 70. And, (laughs) but it takes me, like, literally, it took me three weeks to make and deliver pies. And fortunately, you know, our business is not real busy in, in December, plus you throw in COVID. And so I had plenty of time. And so, um, but fast forward to Moise's passing and um, um, I, it became clear to me the reason that I was, have been making pies. And so now instead of giving pies away, to friends and family and clients, now we're selling them, and um, with the proceeds going to Mopai U and um, uh, Infinity Lighting Solutions, um, will just like we did with the T-shirts, um, we're going to match the first five thousand dollars of pie sales, um, um, and. Our our goal this year will be to um, obviously sell a whole bunch of pies, but to um, uh, reach out to companies like Cougar and and a bunch of you know there are thousands of companies that every year send out great Christmas gifts, mm-hmm. holiday gifts to their clients. Might be a Omaha Steaks, it might be um, a good company, Whiskey Pie, Pecan Pie. They're all, they're great products. We like getting them. They're expensive. Um, But once that, once the pie's gone or the steaks are gone, there's nothing there. There's nothing left. And so the purpose of of Mo Pie U um, is to provide tuition assistance to children who've lost a parent to cancer. Uh, and we're doing it in, uh, it's our way of, of continuing the legacy of Mo. Um, and so what we're, um, what we're planning on doing this year is, and years forward, is to reach out to companies, individuals that, and say, hey, Instead of, you're already spending that money, um, but there's, there's, there's nothing left to that, you know, once, once whatever it is, is, is gone. And so, um, spend that same money, um, buy some pies, and help put a kid through college. Um, and um, so, we're, the response that we've had has just been, <laughs> it's, uh, I'm, I'm amazed every day, um, and so um, 
I think we're gonna over the years we're gonna we're gonna sell a whole we're gonna sell thousands of pies and um, there's no telling how many um, kids lives will will uh, impact and change so it's it's an incredible story and uh, you know it's hits home for me I'm not not much different in age uh, than than Moises was and have some young kids so um, and unfortunately I've had had a few friends um, go through bouts of cancer and things like that so I mean it's just, it's definitely uh, close to home I think everybody can unfortunately relate to mm -hmm. to that story and uh, I think it's amazing that that uh, you know that you and infinity have stepped up and and done these things not only to, to kind of get the initial uh, movement going to raise the money to help them uh, through the process but to kind of continue the legacy and, and uh, do the formal setup of of the nonprofit and and keep it going with um, with the tuition assistance I think it's, I think well, it's a great and, organization. I, and I just have to add that um, it's it goes way beyond um, infinity um, uh, you know I had I was fortunate to um, a good friend, Mike Shreve. Um, mm -hmm. And I reached out to Mike in the early stages of Nomo Cancer and just said, hey, I'm looking for, way, I'm, I need some underwriting help. Um, and um, uh, Mike's response was, let me see what I can do. And literally within... A couple of days, I had the beginnings of a group of people, companies that I didn't know, um, including your dad and uh, and Cougar USA, and companies like JBS and companies like APS, um, and um, to the point where if we had a, you know, I went from not knowing any of those people to now if I were to if I were to go to battle or I'm like uh, those are these are the people that I want standing right next to me and um, it was incredible because if I had a need I would just say hey guys I need X and <laughs> literally <laughs> within hours <laughs> I yeah. had X, yep. um, and the response was, you know, let us know if you need anything else. And uh, that is, and so, yeah, it goes way, you know, I'm just kind of the, I'm a placeholder, basically, and, and, and a, a guy that had an idea and tried to, you know, I'd been trying to figure out for 15 years why I'm making pies, and now I know why I'm making pies. That's it's incredible. So we have the you have the pies available that you've been making, but also mm -hmm. had some efforts to kind of commercialize that a little bit, mm -hmm. I guess. Expanded yes. that out to um get a, you know, professional baking company involved to to mm -hmm. make it more readily available. So um, you know, I guess if people want to get involved with Mopai U support the organization kind of continue Mo's legacy, eat some delicious pie. What what's the best way for them to do that? So quickly, I'll I'll just give you an update on the. We have been very very blessed to um, have connected with Royer's Pie Haven, um, okay. in um, they have the Royer's Pie Haven is located in Round Top, but they have their. Um, commercial kitchen in Brenham okay and uh, they are going to um, take over baking um, of our pies on a commercial basis um, here very soon um, and their kitchen can produce 350 pies a day oh wow and so um, it's a little bit of an uptick from oh your my God. 70 over three weeks oh uh, the yeah, they can stamp out a they can stamp out a pie crust in about a second, um, <laughs> and put it in a pan. And um, it takes me about fifteen minutes to roll out a a, a pie and put it in in, in a pan. Oh, and wow. uh, cool thing about uh, what they're going to do, um, they they 
uh, they make a nine inch pie. Well, this is a it's almost an eleven inch deep dish, and so um, they are going to they're getting a new um, new pan, um, new box, and they're going to the pie crust will be stamped. One side, one edge of the one end of the pie crust will say um, Mo Pie U, and the other end will say uh, Eat Mo Pie. Oh wow! And so, very excited about that. They're they're ramping up production, getting everything ready, and so they'll be available to buy the pies through through the Mo Pie U website, right? Yes. And anywhere that Royer's pies are available, right? Yes, yeah, so um, pies are available now on uh, mopieu.org. You'll have the ability to um, order pies um, uh, or buy pies from Royers. Um, they also have a um, cafe in mm-hmm. Round Top, um, and I believe the pie will be the mopieu pie will be part of the the menu there, awesome. uh, which is exciting. And so, um, yeah, lots of, uh, and then we will have a, um, a formal pie drive, um, in the fall, uh, for, um, that Thanksgiving to Christmas time holiday frame. gift. Yep. 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 We ask for the, um, donations. We ask for a $50 donation on the, um, on the pies, um, and, um, tax deductible. I can and, tell you it's uh, worth every yep. penny. <laughs> it's worth every penny. And, um, um, we also have um, Mopai U t-shirts, Eat mm-hmm. Mopai t-shirts available, um, aprons, got some hats. Fishing shirts. Fishing shirts, um, both for, uh, we've got a, the fishing shirt I'm wearing is, uh, 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 has for, the, lo- the Mopai U logo on it, as well as No Mo Cancer logo. We also have another uh, Magellan fishing shirt that's just the um, No Mo Cancer logo on it. So, yeah, lots of opportunities, and we'll be expanding that, um, yeah. expanding the um, availability here before long. Nice. And then the other kind of drive or uh, kind of donation drive that you have going is, is the oh. what you're calling <laughs> the, the Triple Crown, right? And I that's, forgot about that. <laughs> and the, you know, I'm, I'm, you're, I'm gonna be a glutton over here and eat, eat some <laughs> more of this pie. But you're a glutton for punishment in, in what you're trying to pull off with the, uh, the triple crown. So can you, can you explain that one? You bet. So, I came up with the idea. Well, let me backtrack. So, uh, I'm getting ready to turn. I'll turn 60 in November, and um, when I was turning about this time it was august of um 2010 i worked for the spca at the time and um came up with the idea we had a we had a um we were replacing a a a walk a a, a, an in-person walk 5k walk um with a virtual event called i walk for animals and so I came up with the idea, and this was mid-August, um, and I'm thinking that the that it, this was in March, and so I thought, oh, I'm fixing to turn 50 in April, or I mean, yeah, I'm turning 50 in November, um, and I've always wanted to do a marathon, and so I'm going to do my own marathon and raise a bunch of money, and so... I go into our staff meeting that day and throw out my my idea and challenge my my colleagues to kind of do something similar or crazy mm-hmm. and uh they look like are you an idiot? <laughs> and uh you know like sure okay. Well, my first mistake was the fact that um it was replacing that uh, that event but it wasn't replacing it on the calendar. It was, it was, uh, that event was now in November. Um, and so it was like the third week of August. And so now instead of having six months to train for a marathon by myself, 
I had about uh, I had 79 days, mm-hmm. and um, uh, that was the summer that it was incredibly hot. This yep. was like August the 20th. And um, long story short, I did it, um, and I raised about five thousand dollars. And um, of course, I never never ran again. For yeah, it's kind of like doing the MS one fifty, you know. Uh, After you get off the I'm, I'm your good. seat, you're, yeah, I'm like the bike sold, and and so flash forward to today, um, and Mopai U, um, I turned sixty in November, and I do know where the you know where the where the, where the event is on my calendar now, and so. Um, I came up first, I came up with the idea of doing another marathon for my 60th. Um, and then, then I came up with another crazy idea and said, instead of just doing a marathon, let's do, I'm also in the process of losing, um, 80 to a hundred pounds. And so I got about another 20 to go. And so my idea was, um, that I called the Triple Crown was lose 100 pounds, um, walk 100 miles in 100 hours. And uh, fortunately, I'm going to do that on the East Coast with my brother um, somewhere probably on the Appalachian Trail and not a sidewalk in Katy, which is where I normally do my walking. And training, yeah. And so I've been doing about 50-plus miles a week um, wow. walking and um, um, it's hot. And uh, but my goal this time is to raise ten thousand um, dollars for Mopai U. And um, people can, um, you know, go online to uh, MopaiU.org, make donations. Um, again, they're tax deductible. Um, it's definitely an aggressive goal, but uh, <laughs> you know, it sounds like based on past experience that yeah. that you're going to get there and um i'm going to sell pies not eat them no. <laughs> well if you're trying to lose weight i think that's a smart approach but you know i think it's it's awesome um not only what you're doing with the triple crown to to, to lose the weight to to walk the miles and and raise the money but just in general like i said to to kind of do um everything to get mopai off the ground and and just everything uh before that um, helping Mo's family and, and uh, everything during that time and now to kind of carry on that legacy uh, says a lot and uh, definitely um, you know glad to glad to have met you as well and, and uh, Absolutely. you know have you as a partner uh, with Cougar and, and uh, it's been been great getting to know you over the last you know six well, eight months or so and we we um, for those for all that don't know um, Tim is the the, the absolute driving force and brains behind um all of this and the mopai U website and um so um we are extremely grateful for um your assistance and cougar's assistance and and um uh, you know just um thankful for the um the partnership and the friendship absolutely yeah happy to uh contribute you know my, my small piece there so um but yeah i you know in general again like i said great great having you on <clears throat> excuse me great having you on um enjoyed talking infinity lighting solutions um learning mm-hmm. a little bit about kind of what's going on in in the lighting world and also getting to kind of uh retell the story here of mopai U and uh you know be able to, to mm-hmm. taste this amazing pie i mean i've had uh so now I've had I've had uh, whiskey on the show, I've had rum, <laughs> beer, and now I'm on to pies. And you've set the bar pretty high for bourbon. For, for b- yeah, yeah. Bur- yeah, bourbon pie. So a, you know, setting the bar pretty high for the next guest uh, well, for for what we're going to be doing next. And time. the 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 bourbon of choice for for these pies is Vanilla Crown. So I found that it's it's uh, it's it's pretty tasty with the pecans. It uh, it's definitely a good combination. Yeah. As your as your dad would like to say, or likes to say, is the 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 viscosity um, <laughs> is is good. So, yes, bringing yeah. in the technical terms there. Yeah. So great. So any any last thoughts here, uh, either on Infinity, you know, what your work with Infinity or or Mopai U? 
I don't think so. I th- it, this has been a this has been a blast, and um, um, this is um, kind of way outside my comfort zone. But uh, <laughs> you know, hey, it's been it's been fun. No, I, like I said, I appreciate you coming on. It was, it was great hearing about uh, both Infinity and and Mopai U, and you know, hopefully, uh, we can get that that message out to a lot of people, like you said, and be able to have people enjoy some pies and be able to raise some money for uh, for tuition. So awesome, win win for everybody. Thanks, man. Thank you. Also want to thank everyone for watching or listening today on this episode of Building Value, and we hope to see you on the next one.